Python Dunder. Yeah, Dunder sounds like a weird word, I know. It stands for double under, as in double underscore. And the reason why we have these is because these are special functions or magic functions that help out your classes. And you'll be able to work with them when you're working with objects later. Now, let's go through a list of about maybe six of them, and we can look at the different functionalities that they have. So in order to start this off, first thing I'm gonna to need to do is create a class. And in this case, I'm gonna create a class of a student. Now, the first dunder that we're gonna use is the init function. And this is used when you're initializing an object. And so you basically tell Python, hey, I want to require these things when I create an object. And in this case, I'm gonna pass self because that's what you pass with every method when you're using objects. And then I'm gonna require a name. And what I'm going to do with this name is I'm going to say, hey, this object's name, this variable name right here is going to equal name, which is my name up here. So let's run this, make sure that it works. And I'm going to create a student named Bob, and I'm going to give him the name of Bob. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, and there we go right there. So you can see that we created an object and we get our uh, we get our object right here. And we can even look at bob.name to make sure it works. Yep, makes sense. Great. So the next uh, dunder that we're going to use is going to be the uh, representation, the string representation uh, dunder. And what that is abbreviated to is uh, REPR. And so with REPR, we're going to pass self again. And then we are going to return a student. And we're going to put this in curly brackets because we're going to do format self.name. So what we're doing here is when we want to print out the string representation of our object, well, it's going to print out what's under uh, REPR. And in this case, I want to make it the official kind of the, the we'll call it the, um, the nice look, not the nice looking version, but the official version of what I want this string to be for this object. And in this case, I just want it to be student space and then its name. So let's go ahead and run this. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, Bob repper string. And then let's see what this repper string looks like. I'm going to call repper Bob. And you see here that this is what gets returned when we want to use that string representation. Now, there's something very similar to this. And this is going to be the str method. So this one's a bit more of the informal side of things. And I might use this for a little debugging if I'm going to go through it. Um, but I'll say student with name of... Bob. And then again with this one, we'll say uh, regular string print Bob. And there we go, student with name of Bob because we called the string method right there. So the next one that we're going to do is going to be the length method. And so, for example, if I were to do uh, Bob or let's just say length, and I'm going to say lang Bob, it's going to throw me an error because it says it has no attribute of length. Well, if I want to, um, or has no length. Well, if I want to give it a length, then what I need to do is I need to use the length dunder, which is going to be len. And so in this case, you can tell Python to return whatever you want it to be. And what I want it to do is I actually want it to return, return self.tests. Now we haven't actually made tests yet. And so I'm going to go ahead up at the top here and right when this object gets initialized, I'm going to, uh, create a list of empty list called tests. But then because I want to add some tests to this, I'm going to need to create uh, add tests. And you'll notice that this one is not a dunder uh, test score because it's just a regular method. I'm going to say self.tests.append and then we'll say test score. Run that. Great. And then right after I create Bob, I'm going to say add test. And let's do, let's add a couple tests here. Let's add 50. Let's go with an 80 test. Let's go with a 90 test. And let's go with a 96 because he did a good job. Cool. So now well, I'm going to run this. It's going to add all these tests to this empty string up here. And then when I call length, it's going to return the length of the tests. And that's basically the length of the list. So we'll go ahead and run this. Cannot interpret integer. Great. And that's because I said return just the list. And that's not what we want to do. We want to turn the length of the list. And there we go, we get four tests that are right there. Fabulous. The next one that we're gonna do is gonna be get item. So get item is good when you have a list of something. And in this case, we have a list of tests. And so I'm gonna say 
itself. And then I'm just, when you get item, you're getting a single item. So you want to get the position of something. And I'm going to say return self.tests and then position. So when I call get item and a position, it's going to give me the test at that position. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say print get, oops, get item. And then I'm going to say Bob dot get, let's see what it pops up. No, get item. And then I'm going to call out, let's do item number two. It has no attribute get item. It's because I didn't uh, run the one above. And there it is right there. Fabulous. Because that's our test. Um, that's our test number two that we inserted. Because you can see here, this is test zero, test one, test two. Fabulous. The next one that we're going to look at is actually going to be reverse. And so reverse is good and it pretty much does what it sounds like. It's going to, you know, reverse your elements for you. <clears throat> and in this case, I'm just going to return self and then I'm going to call colon colon. So that's going to return me everything, but I want to do it um, via negative one, meaning it's going to go backwards for me. And I'll go reverse right there. Great. And let's run this. And let's get reverse, reverse. I'm gonna say Bob dot reverse, get rid of the two. And because that's a method, we actually need to call it. So we're gonna put the parentheses, reverse. Oh, that's because I just told reverse had a positional argument. Nope, we don't want a position with reverse. We just wanna return the whole thing. And there it is. And so there's our test scores that are reversed for us. And then the final one that we're gonna do is gonna be the get ATTR dunder and what that means is if you try calling an attribute on your object but that attribute doesn't exist then get attribute or get attr is what's going to be returned for us and so in this case i want to say atr not found and then i'm going to do a space and then i'm going to say item dot upper so what i mean by item dot upper here is whatever this attribute is called that i try um getting so it, when I call get attribute, I'm going to specify an item. And if this isn't found, then I'm going to say, all right, this attribute isn't found, then just return the uppercase version of this item. Okay. So first, let's see what this looks like if we didn't have get attribute. So I'm just going to comment that out so it doesn't do anything. And then I'm going to say, uh, let's call this test attribute. I'm going to say, hey, go get me um, bob.test attribute. And it says, hey, student has no object or student object has no attribute test attribute. Well, it's true because I never specify test attribute up here. But if we add get attribute, this will be called if the class cannot find the attribute. And in this case, it won't be able to. So let's see what runs here. Do it one more time. And there it is. So because it couldn't found it, it said, hey, test attribute, because that's what I printed right here. Attribute not found test attribute. And you could see here, I could put a, a random string on the end and you know it's gonna give us this random stuff. So it just returns back the uppercase version of the name that you have specified. Now, that is a quick introduction to Dunder or double underscores. And you'll see that it helps add a little bit more functionality to your classes um, via methods uh, within Python.